we know that young people are really in mental health crisis now. And that problem is getting worse all the time. Young adults between about 18 and 24 have the highest likelihood of mental illness and that mental illness manifests most likely as depression and or anxiety. It's an upward trend and so it's getting worse and it's much greater than something like COVID-19. We were looking at uh, manifestations in children of parental alienation that they experience and what does that look like in terms of their mental, physical health. Actually, there are four of us and we have multidisciplinary expertise. And so we're, we're using that to sort of come from an interdisciplinary approach to parental alienation and what to do about it. You know, enmeshment is huge. So enmeshment isn't a behavior, but it is a dynamic. The child is very unhealthily attached to who is the alienator. And because of that, the child never develops into an independent, productive, compassionate adult. And they don't have the life skills that they should have, which is a parent's fundamental job. The enmeshment, we're not going to see, right? We wouldn't know about that. But we would see things like, uh, you know, independent thinker. Then we also saw behaviors that are quite easy to spot, things that I see every day in the classroom, uh, things that my daughter, who's a teacher, sees every day in the classroom. So, you know, about 12 to 14, 15 years old, she sees the very same behaviors that I see in my young adult students. We also see lack of ambivalence. So the child will be very black and white. If I ask them about things they like, things that they care about, it's always uh, something either that they love or something that they hate. There's no in-between. There's no, well, I'm sort of interested, which would be typical of, you know, young adults, right? They've already made up their mind about everything. Lack of emotion. And so alienated kids tend to be quite flat. And that uh, really stands out to me. I think by young adulthood, they've learned that coping skill very well. And so it's very hard to get them excited about anything or for them to even be interested in anything beyond a sort of superficial level. I try to emphasize to an audience, if I'm speaking to them, that the absence of guilt uh, is quite shocking. So they're not just engaging in behaviors that are impolite or disrespectful. They're sometimes engaging in criminal behavior, you know, stealing things from the targeted parent's home. The trajectory is very negative. It won't turn out well. And that child will not grow out of it. That child is now saddled with that antisocial behavior. The campaign of denigration is probably the last one I should mention because that's sort of an overall, all-encompassing, uh, you know, set of behaviors that a child will engage in and that again carries on into adulthood. So they will tell anyone who listens about how horrible their other parent is. If the terms they're using are outside of the normal terminology for a child of such age, that's also a real red flag. The outcomes are what I consider to be the long-term results of being alienated for over years. So basically psychologically abused. But this is where you get, for example, mental health issues, but also physical health issues, uh, antisocial behaviors, because these are kids that have trouble dealing with other kids. They don't get social cues. They don't feel good about themselves, and so they are trying to make up for that. And I think the most common, uh, probably, manifestation of that outcome, when you see it in the real world, whether it's the playground or on a campus, is that the child will, or young adult, will be a bully, or they will be the bullied, and in equal proportion.
the result of having very poor self-esteem and an inability to form friendships. And so instead they try to form alliances by being bullies um, and uh, try to, to perhaps appear that they're tough and that they're protectors of those who are part of their alliance. But another person may instead be someone who is chronically bullied because they may be quite inappropriate socially. There was one little girl I was uh, familiar with and I actually met her a couple of times and she was 10 years old and she played basketball and she would go to her basketball game with her alienating parent and she would wear a very short skirt, fishnet stockings and running shoes, lots of gaudy makeup and drinking Red Bulls most of the time. She's 10 years old. Any parent who loves their child would want their child to fit in, you know, to have friends, to have a positive experience. This little girl would show up to her basketball game and sit down on the bench and you could see the other team was kind of, you know, giggling and she was sort of set up to be bullied. And that fits into mental health, but it also is part of that antisocial behavior, you know, the difficulty with social relationships. They have very poor life skills. They've maybe never been in a park. And so they are afraid to go to a park. They're afraid to be in a playground. If they're older, they're maybe afraid when they're, one of their acquaintances at school says, hey, we're going to the mall, do you want to come? It's a dangerous place. And the only safe place is with my alienating parent, who I am enmeshed with. He didn't try to show off his basketball skills or his music collection, those kinds of things. Instead, it would be, you know, look what I can damage, uh, for example, or, or who can I make angry. It would be quite aggressive uh, with anyone he wanted to impress. I see those in school, I see those in transcripts that I'm reading as part of my um, work now. We are focusing a lot now in society at large on mental health issues. And so we forget that those mental health issues also create psychosomatic problems. There's a very high proportion of kids who are alienated who have, for example, eating disorders. And yet that didn't seem to make sense because even living with their custodial parent who had maybe a pretty good diet and exercised, that's not what we're seeing in the child. And so there was something going on at a deeper level. And by the time they, they're in my classroom, 18, 19, I can almost look around the class and I see someone who appears to have an eating disorder. So either very obese, which is unusual for young adults, um, or sometimes look like they've got anorexic tendencies because they are not just slim. And often they would be, have very little energy, sometimes falling asleep and sometimes kids that seemed like they were high. Um, and so in those young adults, I think they're, they're using all kinds of different coping strategies. You know, cannabis is huge now and they convince themselves that this is actually a healthy choice. I think there's a, a whole bunch of reasons that perhaps the, the numbing part, I think to try to fit in, maybe others will think I'm kind of cool if I do that. Uh, you know, maybe I can attract others because I've got some cannabis that I'm using. Well, what do we do next? because we have the empirical evidence on parental alienation. We know it's dangerous at all levels. We know that there are long-term, lifelong outcomes. That debate is really over. It has to be prevented, most importantly. But we also have to have legislation that will change the norm and also to move away from a very outdated gender paradigm uh, you know, sometimes fall into the trap of thinking of males as being aggressive and, you know, the usual stereotype and, and the women need protecting. And it seems to me that sort of works against uh, mothers and fathers. <laughs> the expectations are so unrealistic. We have to have judges who are more reflexive so that they understand those 
preconceived notions or biases. I really feel after watching many trials that uh, the judges sometimes have made up their minds even before the trial starts. When I see behaviors like, you know, the judge sitting there like this and gazing around or saying, I'm not prepared to read documents from the past because we want to move forward. And in an alienation case, if you know nothing about the history, how would you possibly know even that it is a, an alienation case or not? There are plenty of false allegations. And again, that's part of our current study right now. But we also know that any kind of allegations about violence must be investigated immediately. We are not separate from the domestic violence advo advocates, if you can call them that. Uh, you know, we actually are working in that same, under that same umbrella. And there's just a backlash coming from a group that does not want to move beyond that gender paradigm. And overwhelmingly, parents support and the public supports equal parenting. And this is good for women. You know, being a divorced mother myself, the week that my kids were at my, their dad's was great. Then I could get all kinds of things done, I could catch up on work, and I had a bit of a life. I would argue that I'm even a better mother because I had my kids half time. And I think my dad, or my uh, former husband, became a better dad. We talked a lot about the super mom complex. And it was sort of in the early days of, uh, you know, emancipation of women in that, you know, feminism had been around for a long time, but we now had not only gotten into the workforce in droves, but we now had good jobs. I think there was a real societal push towards women doing everything and wearing that as a badge of honor. And on the other hand, dad was kind of struggling with, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. I thought I was the breadwinner. On the other hand, I'm told that I'm not emotional and I'm not present. I'm not good with the relationship, emotional side, the intimacy of my, of my life with my wife or my partner. Um, and so I think it was a very confusing time. The society on the whole kind of ignoring them in favor of the feminism movement which was wonderful and I and all other women, and I would argue men as well have benefited from, um, but it's now gotten to the point where we realize that we don't wanna do everything because doing everything will cause burnout. If I burn out, I'm not a very productive human being. I'm not a very nice human being and I'm not a very compassionate person either. My kids are doing very well, and I think most kids do, where the parents just uh, act like parents first. The marriage is over, but the, the marriage to the children never is. Domestic violence is, is a huge problem. We're saying that domestic violence against children is also a huge problem, and it fits under that same uh, umbrella. And this, is, this too is a very specific kind of abuse and it needs to be called an accurate name. And it is. I really believe that a divorce or, or separation doesn't ruin kids, dysfunction does. So I think most of them know, whether it's conscious or subconscious, that they are actually not doing the right thing, but they don't care because it serves their own agenda. That's been proven too, that public opinion is all for shared parenting and equal parenting where possible. In one of my questions in the Kids Come Last study was how many of the alienators had been diagnosed with a mental, a personality disorder. It was quite a few. One is revenge. So I hate my ex and I'm going to make him or her pay for it. I'm going to get you fired. I'm, I'm going to make sure you never see the kids again. And in one case, um, if you dare defy my sole custody in any way, then your kids may not survive. I can't believe that a parent who supposedly thinks they're doing the right thing would ever say, use their children and threaten their lives. Money is huge. 
you know, um, and this is a way for a non-custodial parent or a custodial parent to sometimes gain money. What we know about adults and how they are suffering because if they lose their child, that's losing half of themselves and that they carry that chronic stress throughout their lives. And they're constantly trying to resolve that crisis and to try to rebuild a relationship with their probably adult children by that time in whatever way they can. And you can't get those years back. Thank you.